Talzi, a Mangan village in the mountains of southern Mindoro. Just two generations ago, these families still lived on the coast. Fertile farming land and fishing made survival much easier there. But then came the so-called lowlanders. The Mangyan, who had more lived, who had the fruitful land, who had the Mangyan who lived by the sea, who had the fertile plains, were just driven off and pushed back into the mountains. Gedrängt und und in die Berge gedrängt. For more than 40 years, Ewald Dinter has lived on the Philippines. For over 20 with the Mangyan. It took a while before the shy mountain people realized that the German hadn't come, like the other foreigners, to see their property and possessions. Da die Berge, die ganzen Bananen da drüben. The mountains over there, that's the Mangyan's area. But the lowlanders, the Tagalogs, came up here, and now all the bananas over there, the lowlanders now sell everything. That's just happened in the last 20 or 30 years, that they've been simply pushed out. They're intimidated, and several even come with revolvers. A hundred years ago, Mindoro still belonged to the Mangyan. Then 40,000 people lived on the Philippine island. Today, there are over a million who share the 10,000 square kilometers. The former owners have become a minority, pushed back into the mountains more and more. Their peace-loving nature and hospitality became their undoing. Father Dinter is a missionary of the Divine Word. When the bishop entrusted him with the pastoral care of the Mangyan 20 years ago, it was clear to him that the mission to the Mangyan had to be primarily a struggle for the rights of this threatened people. <clears throat> Only a small part of the seven different Mangyan tribes are Christian. After all, Christianity is the religion of the intruders. It took time for the missionary to be able to convince them that God is on the side of the oppressed. <laughs> When the missionary comes for a worship service every four to eight weeks, then he has time for them. He sleeps with a family or in a hut, living like the Mangyan themselves. They come again and again with land problems and what they're lacking and where they would like support and hope to find it at the Mangyan mission. We're in Kalapan. Here in the capital of the island, the Mangyan are out of place on the street. And yet there is one place in the middle of town which belongs to them, the Mangyan Mission Centre. When Father Dinta took over the leadership of the mission about 20 years ago, it was clear to him that the Mangyan had to seize control of their own destiny. He asked them where they would like support. We have only one wish. Actually, we've only got one wish, land. Land is identity, land is life. Without land, we are nothing. To Father Dinter and his fellow campaigners, it was clear that the land question couldn't wait. They set about recording the Mangyan areas on maps for the first time. With the help of the Mangyan and with the support of the German charity Miserior, they developed a fascinating method. They created three-dimensional maps, maps which even the uninitiated could interpret. There, they could really see it. Oh yes, here, that's where I was born. Recording the areas where the Mangyan lived was one thing. Just as important for Father Dinter and his team was increasing the political pressure on the government. It was a milestone when in 1996 a law was passed in Manila that for the first time acknowledged the right of the Mangyan to their homeland. The government has put their signature to the right of the Mangyan to their land. Getting that in the land registers, we're still working on that one, but the main job's been done. That's been the main task of the Mangyan mission over the last 10 years. That's where we've invested all our resources and personnel. Panatayan, 
a village in the south of the island. Fifty families live here. There's fresh drinking water, a school and a small shop. The 50 families who live here no longer have to live in fear of being driven from their homes. Using missionary funds, the land has been bought and is gradually being distributed among the Mangyans. And the village has something else that's very unusual. In the midst of the bamboo huts, a library. The Dutchman Anton Postma built it. He was Dinter's predecessor as parish priest. The more time he spent with the Mangyans, the more he got an insight into their cultural heritage. When a Mangyan carved characters in some bamboo, his scientific interest was awakened. Fascinated by this, Posma began to study the language of the Mangyan. He discovered that the Philippine culture of the time before Spanish rule had been kept alive by the Mangyan. And he discovered a rich treasure trove of poems. He collected thousands of them. Posma's research is overwhelming evidence of the great cultural heritage of the Mangyan. All the pictures and documents that there are concerning the Mangyan culture have been brought together at this one place. A major part of the collection is thanks to Anton Postma whose studies provide the basis for Mangyan research. The centre is not only open to the scientific community. Here the Mangyan themselves should learn more about their past, and so more about their identity. College students have the opportunity here to discover their own roots through assignments and theses. Well, because now um, the Mangyan culture is in danger of vanishing. We encourage them to, to come to the library, and we also conduct uh, co Mangyan culture training workshops in communities. Like the, the Mangyan elders uh, teach the, the younger generations their uh, cultural practices. The national anthem is also sung in the morning in this school, just as it is throughout the country. And yet the traditional clothing gives away the fact that this is a very special school. This is where only Mangyan are taught. Father Dinter is not just any old guest. He founded the school in Bait 20 years ago to give the Mangyan children living in the mountains the chance of an education as well. Whoever graduates from here the world's his oyster. Here the pupils learn what they cannot learn at any other Philippine school. The alphabet and language of their own people. Their culture, with its rich treasure trove of poems and sayings. But they also learn the language of the others, including those who have exploited their ignorance for years, so that they will no longer be easily deceived just because of their ignorance. Jeder ist gerufen ins Reich Gottes, dass er mit mehr, mit etwas mehr Menschen wird. Everyone is called into the kingdom of God, that he can live with a little more human dignity, a little more laughing in life, in the family, and without hunger or unnecessary illness. To pass on a bit of hope, if that succeeded, that on its own would be a great achievement. Then Jesus' message would have borne fruit once more. Thank you.